A big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you need a website or a domain, go to squarespace.com forward slash James for 10% off your first purchase. Hi everybody, I uh, hope you're all well. Have you noticed that uh, lots of people like to say things like, oh, it's the simple things in life. And then when they say that, they'll reference things like the smell of freshly cut grass. And uh, I think to myself two things. A, I wish I could give you my allergies for a day and then we'll see what you think which is a bit evil, really. But B, I don't think actually that's really all that simple a thing. I mean, when you think what's happening biologically and mechanically to make that smell happen, it's actually quite complex. Uh, people say the same thing about food, don't they? Oh, it's the simple food that's the best. They talk about things like bruschetta. But actually, again, when you think about the processes involved in making the bread, shipping the tomatoes all around the world, it's quite complex. And even the process of eating the food, that's complex from the perspective of all of your senses. I mean, you can taste it, obviously, you can smell it, you can see it, you can touch it if you were that way inclined, and you can even sometimes, with food, uh, hear it if it's sizzling while it's been cooked. Not the case with bruschetta, but uh, you get what I mean. Uh, lying on a beach, people talk about that being a simple process, but again, it invokes all of your senses. You can feel the heat, you can see the brightness with your eyes, you can hear the waves lapping, you can smell the seaweed, and you can hear the guy selling fake sunglasses, and you can smell the hot dogs. But in any case, yeah, lying on a beach even is not a simple proposition from the perspective of your senses. Now, I appreciate that's a weird way to start a photography video, but by way of me being a, a YouTuber and having a photography channel that in part at least aims to try and teach people about photography, I get lots of emails and DMs and comments and stuff from people who are just getting into photography, have just got their first camera uh, and are talking about how they want to learn how to use it basically. You know, how can I shoot manual? What do all these settings do? And I think that's a perfectly understandable place to start. However, increasingly, lots of people are taking great photos without knowing anything about settings or without having to use settings because they're doing so on an app, a native app on a phone where you don't have any control over things like that. And that's because good photos, a lot of the time, are not reliant on things like settings, but they are reliant on one particular thing, which is simplicity. And that's what I wanna talk about today. Now, the reason that photos are so reliant on simplicity is that unlike lying on a beach or eating food, even the simplest food, photos can't be ingested by multiple senses. You see a photo with your eyes and that's it. And I mean, I suppose if it's printed, you can feel the paper and stuff, but that would, would probably be a bit weird. But yeah, you know, you can't, you can't smell a photo. And also the other thing that photography has to deal with is that increasingly we're viewing photos in a place that's not distraction free. Either we're on Instagram scrolling while the TV's also on, or we're flicking through a magazine on a train station platform where there's a child getting dangerously close to the tracks. Uh, and the point is, while we're looking at photos now, more than ever, we're also sort of semi-distracted by other stuff. Uh, and in short, what that means, and what I probably should have got to a couple of minutes ago, is that photos can't afford to be complicated or complex or confusing in any way. They have to be simple, and you have to know exactly what you're looking at from the off. Now, if you've delved into many photography tutorials, you've probably heard this sentiment before, people talking about how to make photos simpler. And uh, basically, there is a very conventional way to do that, and that's to remove stuff. Uh, and you can do that in a variety of ways. You can crop or use longer focal lengths to get rid of stuff at the edges of the frame that might be distracting. Uh, you can use shallow depth of field, you can use cloning. Uh, you can experiment with different shutter speeds to hide details, and you can play around with exposure to do exactly the same. And in fact, here is an example of a very minimal photo where you know exactly what you're supposed to look at from the off and that's just because there is nothing else in the scene apart from the subject and by the way I'm using all my own photos in this video because uh, I wasn't organized enough to get permission to use anyone else's uh, here's another example of a very simple minimal scene where I think at least you know exactly what you should be looking at straight away now these are both very minimal scenes and lots of the time there is a suggestion that minimal equals simple but actually I don't believe that to be true all the time. For example, here is a very minimal photo that I took in Iceland, and uh, I look at that person at the bottom and think, is that a person? If so, what were they facing and what are they doing? And to my eye at least, this minimal photo only becomes simple when you can see that they're walking. And I'd use that as a way of describing that minimal and simple are slightly different things. Now as a step beyond that, I also think that simplicity can be achieved sometimes by adding things to a scene, which isn't talked about much in the photography world. And the aim of today's video is to go through some examples of what I mean by that. 
So here is a shot that I took in Greenland a couple of years ago. Uh, and when I look at this photo, I don't really know what's going on. If I put myself in the shoes of uh, a viewer of the photo, not me who took it. I mean, obviously I know what's going on, but the viewer might not. Now, if we compare this photo with this photo, I think there is a massive difference in simplicity purely because something has been added to the scene. And immediately, there are a few things now established within the photo. The relationship between my feet and the person in front in the blue jacket has been established a bit more. And certainly the relationship between the dogs and the guy in the blue jacket has now been established. And also the scene is now framed quite nicely. And so that to my eyes at least is an example of adding something in the scene to make it simpler. Now in this case, what's been added spans across quite a large part of the frame, but that doesn't always have to be the case. Uh, so if we take a look at this scene, for example, uh, it's a very nice summer's evening in Norway, and uh, it's a very pretty scene, but I don't necessarily know what I should be looking at as a viewer. If this boat gets added, which I should stress was there all along, I just cloned it out to make my point. And with the boat there, I know as a viewer what I should be looking at, or certainly one of the things that I should be looking at. And therefore, the scene is less confusing or less effort to make sense of, to my eye at least. Uh, here's another example of that. So this is a scene in Iceland, which looks quite nice color wise. I mean, we've got the orange and the blue, but it becomes much simpler to digest when this house gets added. And again, the house was there all along. I just removed it for the point of this demonstration. Uh, again, another one, lovely summer's evening in Devon. And if these sup boards and kayaks get added, then something very small in the frame helps the frame to make sense. And in my mind, at least, simplifies it. Uh, birds are great for doing this, or flocks of birds. So here's a scene where birds make it very easy to understand what you're supposed to be looking at. Uh, here's another one in the Faroe Islands, and one I took a few months ago at Land's End in Cornwall. And actually, if I zoom into this one, you can see that uh, with the A7R4, the detail is ridiculous. The bird is actually eating something. I don't know what, mussels? Would it be eating mussels? A crab? Anyway, the addition of those very small things in those scenes make them easier to look at, I think, simpler to look at. So yes, that's my theory, that adding selective things into photos or including things in photos, not necessarily adding, they're already there, but they can be the things that make photos very easy to look at. And of course, as well as adding simplicity, they can add interest. So here's an example of that. This is a photo I took in Scotland of a castle and it's simple, but I don't think it's particularly interesting to look at in this state. But stepping back 100 yards behind some trees, I think adds some interest. And because the leaves and foliage are only around the castle, I don't think they're distracting. Uh, and I've used a shallow depth of field too, which I think helps. Uh, here is another example in Slovenia where I used exactly the same technique. And I think you could probably argue that you didn't need the trees and the branches here because the island looks so majestic. But again, because I've used shallow depth of field and the scene is relatively low in contrast, I don't think they're all that distracting. Now it has to be said that that isn't always the case to be honest. I mean, here is an example in the Peak District where I think the same technique hasn't necessarily worked quite as well. I mean, I thought at the time that I took it that it had, but actually on reflection, I'm not so sure. Uh, so this branch is very dark. It's not all encompassing. It doesn't go across the whole top of the image. And actually I think even though it's out of focus, it does look a little bit distracting. And so like all things in photography, this isn't a binary thing, this is a judgment thing, and uh, you'll have to make your own judgments. But the point I'm making is that in some instances, adding stuff to the frame can increase interest as well as simplicity. I've said that about a hundred times so far, haven't I? Uh, so yes, simplicity is the goal, but it's not just the goal in landscape photography, it's also the case in things like portraiture. So here is a lady picking tea in Sri Lanka, and straight away I know that because I took the photo at a tea plantation. But I don't think the viewer necessarily knows what this lady is doing because she's got hands closed, and unless you look really, really carefully, you can't see that there is tea between her hands. Now in this example, which is very similar, she's got one hand very close to the tea leaves and the other hand putting them in the bag behind her back. And I think that simplifies the scene no end because you get a sense of what she's doing straight away. Now, what's tricky about this is that I've long been an advocate of aiming to take or make photos that are about things rather than just of things. And I think a good qualifier of that is, does this photo make me ask questions about it? And of course, the problem is that you could argue all of the bad examples that I've shown you uh, in this video so far, they all make you ask questions. And to me, typically that question is, 
what's going on there. And in short, I think there's a very fine line in photography between an image that draws you in and piques your curiosity and one that you just stop looking at because it's confusing. And also because there's a boy about to fall off a train platform. But the difference between those two kinds of images can be really, really minimal. And it's our job as photographers to walk on the right side of that line as much as we possibly can. And trying to work out where the line is is probably the most difficult thing in photography, but it's also probably the most important. Uh, so, what am I going on about? Basically, our first question as photographers should be, is the scene in front of me interesting? And it doesn't have to be interesting to anyone else, it has to be interesting to us, the people who are taking the photo. If the answer is yes, then the question has to be, how can I make it simple to look at? And of course that might be using longer focal lengths, it might be shallow depth of field, it might be cloning, it might be leading lines, it might be any of those techniques that we talk about an awful lot in photography. But it might also be adding very small things that draw us into the photo. And I don't think that is necessarily talked about all that much. Certainly not as much as how we shoot in manual mode. And for what it's worth, I don't think I've shot in manual mode in, I don't know, years. Aperture priority is what I use for 99.9% .9 of my photos because aperture is often my only real priority. Anyway, that's by the by. Hopefully I've, um, I've helped some people with this video rather than just confusing the issue of simplicity. Uh, I suppose we'll see in the comments. In any case, Thank you so much for watching and thank you also to the sponsor of this week's video, Squarespace. Now, as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, uh, I'm doing a newsletter every month now, which is powered by Squarespace and I'm gonna be writing it this afternoon. I'm gonna be talking about things such as my gloves hack, which I have um, which I worked on yesterday. I mean, work on is a loose term. Basically, I had photography gloves, uh, but I lost them and I've made my own. So yes, that's the sort of thing you can find in my newsletter. You can sign up for it on my Squarespace website. And as many of you know, I've been using Squarespace for years, uh, both as a place where my portfolio lives, but also in more recent years as a place to host my online store so I can sell my prints, my books, my presets, all that kind of stuff. Now I imagine, or I hope at least, that this video will be watched by lots of new photographers. And if you're looking for a place to showcase your work online, then I would definitely recommend Squarespace. Uh, it's super simple to use. A lot of it is drag and drop, lots of it is sliders. You don't need to know a single line of code. If you did, I wouldn't have been able to make one. But in fact, you don't even really have to worry about things like image resizing. Squarespace does it all for you. So yeah, if you're looking for a place to showcase your work online, then definitely check out Squarespace and you can do so for free by going to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And after that, if you'd like to make a purchase, then just go to squarespace.com forward slash James and you'll get 10% off that first purchase. So uh, a big thank you to Squarespace for their continued support. And like I said, you can sign up to my newsletter on my Squarespace website. And you can also get a free preset when you do that. There's a, a discount code in the, uh, the sign up email that you get for a free preset that sits on my my online store. Anyway, yes, thank you Squarespace, and thanks again to you for watching. Hopefully I haven't muddied the waters of photography anymore. I know what it's like when you're just starting out confusing. I hope I've, yeah. I'll see you next week.